whatever happens here stays with us, you understand? I'm sorry. I'm Steve Warren, actor and writer. I'd say I've probably seen at least 25,000 films, and uh, of those, I've probably reviewed at least 10,000 of them. At the Atlanta Film Festival this year, we're here on Friday, and what movies are you most excited about seeing uh, over the course of the festival? I know you've seen uh, quite a few already. Right, I've seen more than a quarter of them. I've seen most of what I really wanted to see. There are still a few left I'd like to catch. Uh, Winter's Bone, The Good Heart, that's the Brian Cox film, The Good Heart? Yes. Uh, Winter's Bone won, uh, I think, the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance this year. What is this festival becoming? Is it, uh, is it a festival that concentrates on movies that are made on very limited budgets? Uh, this year at Sundance they had uh, something that I, would, I was calling sort of the John Cassavetes category, movies that were made for under $500,000. Um, you've seen more than a quarter of the films this year, and you've for many, many years you've been coming to the festival, as, as have I. And um, what is this festival now? What is its identity? Do you know, can, you, can you speak to that? Well, it tries to be uh, geared toward, I think, discovering films rather than uh, a lot of festivals will get... I, I mean, I've seen festivals composed entirely of films that were going to be released within the next three months. Uh, mostly independent films, but still they were on the way to theaters. Already with distributors. Right. Uh, there was, I remember back in the mid-90s, the Fort Lauderdale Film Festival that I reviewed as uh, the direct-to-video festival because uh, I don't think there was anything in there that was worthy of a theatrical release, and Blockbuster was one of the big sponsors of the festival. So Imagine it just seemed, seemed to go together that most of the films in the festival would be available at Blockbuster within the next few months. Well, and, you know, I know Brian Cox had a film called Red that uh, went to VOD pretty quickly after, its, after, after it did its limited festival run. So a lot of uh, vo uh, video on demand uh, products end up going that way. Um, the distribution channels at Sundance this year were very interesting. They had uh, a lot of movies that were going to be available on YouTube immediately. I'm always too busy reviewing the things that I have to see to find time for the things I want to see. That's the curse of a film, film critic. Um, we, people think, oh, well, being a film critic is just so much fun. You get to see all these movies, and, you know, you just, it's all fun, fun, fun. Well, number one, you have to write about them, and you have to find time to write about them. Number two, you have to see a bunch of movies you don't want to see, right? Right. I, I, I mean, I'm so tired of seeing everything from the 80s being remade. Yeah, A-teams uh, coming. Most of them weren't worth watching in the first place, and, oh, well, but... Red Dawn is coming. Yeah. The Karate Kid comes, what, this month, next month? Next I, month. I, yeah, I, I guess. So. I, I'm sorry I haven't worked up my enthusiasm for that yet, but I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> what films have you seen already that you'd like, you'd like to talk about? Uh, well, my favorites so far have been uh, the comedy, The Battle of Pussy Willow Creek. But though arguably the greatest heroes of the war, by the close of the 19th century, these maverick soldiers, and even the name of their fabulous battle, had been all but forgotten. The drama, Handsome Harry. Oh, Harry, just tell him I'm sorry. All five of us did that. And the film noir, The Square. Those, those are my three favorites out of... I don't know. The Square is getting a lot of a lot of good press, and so we'll probably isn't it already slated for a theatrical? Release? It's it's opening here April 30th. Yeah, so it's already coming. Handsome Harry is already getting a theatrical release. At least in uh, New York, I don't know. I think it's opening it's... today, actually, in New York. Uh, I saw that movie and I did like it. 
Um, so again, I, you, you talked about movies, discovering movies as being the niche of this festival. Why should people who like movies, why should they come to the Atlanta Film Festival? What, what distinguishes it from other festivals, film festivals that around the country and that kind of thing? Well, uh, as I said, there's more of an emphasis on new discoveries here, so uh, people, I guess, could come for bragging rights. Oh, I saw that one at the Atlanta Film Festival at there its it world is. premiere, and, you know, here it is getting the Indie Spirit Award or the Oscar or, or going direct to Oblivion. Uh, well, that's that's a, a big option, too, for a lot of the well, festival films. Well, and then you, you can always the surprise victory of... Uh, what uh, the secrets in their eyes uh, for uh, uh, best a uh, best uh, uh, foreign, foreign film, language film. foreign language film last year. Um, sometimes you get to see movies like that. That uh, I think the only reason that the film now is getting a theatrical release is because of the Oscar win. Uh, so you see a lot of that kind of thing when you're able to go to festivals that have an emphasis on discovery. Well, that's good to, good to know because the, I too share in that. Uh, there are a lot of movies that are at this festival this year that I have never ever heard of. And that's a good thing, because when we're in the business and we see a lot of movies, uh, it's always good to see something different. So, all right. Thanks, Steve. Okay, John.